Hello, right, this is the next part. So I fed my starter again this morning and it's got quite bubbly. So now it's time to make the next, the next part of this process, which is called uh, the Levan. So you can see how the, the starter's got that nice kind of gluten structure in it and it's a bit bubbly and stuff. So what I do is it's supposed to be about 25 grams of starter, which is about a couple of spoonfuls. I, I used to measure and all that stuff, but I don't really do that anymore. So I'll tell you what, let's put this camera down. Okay, so we have a nice big spoonful of bubbly, frothy starter, and we put it in our mixing bowl. couple of spoonfuls it's about 25 35 grams something like that obviously you don't want to put too much in because you need some left over to keep feeding um, I'm gonna put a little bit extra in so I don't have to do any discard and I'll just just refeed this starter now <laughs> let's get our scales Okay, unstable that says, why is that, okay, okay, there we go, put that on there like so, zero that, and I'm just going to put 100 grams of flour in here, so that's uh, 100 grams of flour, that's the strong wholemeal bread flour, and 100 grams or just under of water and now we can mix that up like so So it's just like making a, it's just like feeding a starter really, but you're going to make it into more of a, a thick kind of little mini dough, which can sit now for a few hours, a um, couple of hours, maybe two, three hours perhaps, and um, get nice and bubbly. So I'll come back to that a bit later, and then we'll start, we'll do a mix, we'll start mixing uh, a dough uh, to get ready for baking. So now we're going to mix our dough. We've had the Levan sat here for a couple of hours. So it should be quite active and fermented. So we're going to put in, we're going to make quite a lot of dough. We're going to make enough to make two big loaves or three smallish ones or a big loaf and some rolls or baguettes or whatever it is you wanted to do. So we're going to use our wholemeal and we're going to use 200 grams of that so basically we're making a kilogram of, of flour so we're going to use 200 grams of the wholemeal and we're going to use 800 grams of the white and then we get to the complicated bit which is hydration and the amount of water that you need now adding water is really important. If you if you wanted quite a if you wanted a, a, a bake that was going to rise quite well, then you want a high hydration and you want it to, your dough to be quite sticky. Now the problem with that is that then it's harder to, to handle and harder to shape. So it's best to go the lower hydration when you're first starting out of say well Six, you could do something like 65 to 75 percent hydration so what that means is with a kilogram of flour you would start with maybe 700 grams uh, of water so but the other thing is you don't add all of the water um, at, at the start you don't add all the water in with the with the initial mix so if we're going to add 
700 grams. I'm going to do an 80% hydration, so that would be 800 grams. So if I wanted to add that amount of water over the period of time that I was mixing the dough and, and shaping it and doing the stretching folds and stuff, then I would, I would the initial amount of water would be 80% roughly of the total. And for me, I've been playing around with what's good for me and I find that is around 650 grams of water. So for this kilogram of flour, I'm gonna be adding 60, 650 grams of water. So here's my scales. Let's add our 200 grams. Now the thing with the water then is, is that, um, so you add 80% of the total water that you wanted to put in. And then the, the other 20% of that water, you would add um, half of it, half of what's left would go in when you're adding the salt. And the rest of it would be added gradually as you're doing all your stretching and folding. Um, and then that, be, that basically uh, would be all the water that's added in total. If you add all your water at the very beginning in the first mix, then your dough gets really sticky and it becomes really hard to manage because you need to add more water as well. So you end up with a really high hydration. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna work out. And that's a common mistake. People just put all the water in at the very beginning. That's the whole meal. Here's my last bag of strong white. I got from White Trez the other day. I need to try and find some more. I've got an order of, um, I think it's something like 15 kilograms of flour from Shipton Mill, but it hasn't arrived yet. So, 800 grams of the white is going in. More a bit over there, so taking this straight out the kettle. Um, so it's a little bit. Um, it's not too too hot. It's a little bit warm, but that's fine. At this stage, we're not adding anything else. No salt, no oil, anything like that. Well, I've got to reset my scales, otherwise I'll be completely lost. So we're going to try 650. There you go. Okay, so let's, let's mix. KitchenAid mixer. And here is the, the claw. The, the, the hook attachment, whatever it is, claw. Um, bang that on. Put the cover on it. Okay. Is that Alice, do you want to film over the top there? I'm going to have to be careful. Now, if you were, when you get, you start getting used to mixing dough, Pretty soon you can do it by eye without measuring if you um, if you know what to look out for. The thing that you want to look out for is how it sticks to the side of the bowl. So as your dough as your dough starts getting mixed together, it will start to either stick to the side, or as the dough is being sort of whipped around. It will kind of stick to the side and then pull pull the dough off. So you want to find a kind of healthy middle between the two. So if it's too sticky, if it's too wet, it's not going to pull away from the sides at all. And if it's um, not wet enough, 
it just becomes a um, a ball and there's no there's no stickiness to it on the side at all so you want it kind of somewhere in the middle depending on how hydrated you want it really if you're making pancake mix you don't want it to be a ball of dough you just want to just want some some wet dough so I think This one's going to be quite sticky, so that's fine. So I'm quite, I'm getting used to handling the wet dough now, so I don't mind if it's going to be a little bit sticky and wet. But you see how it's sort of forming, sticking to the sides and then pulling away. You can see those strings, those gluten strings already developing. Right, so we've got the dough mixed and it's quite a lot stickier than I'm used to actually, but we'll see how we get on with it. So what we need to do now is transfer this. So a little, a bit of a word about uh, handling sticky dough. So this is quite sticky. So if you just touch it like that, you're gonna get dough on your fingers because it's sticky. So you're gonna need a bit of water and then that will allow you to kind of handle it a bit better and if you see how I'm kind of sort of trying to get it away from the side of the um, the bowl but without getting it all over my fingers and making it impossible to to um, to pick up so what we're doing is we're going to move it into this I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some water on my hands here and literally just scoop around get it in the bowl like so. You can see how it's already developing the gluten network. So it doesn't snap. Kind of it's stretchy, stretching. And it will get that network will get stronger and stronger. And and that's why you do the 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 stretching and the folding when instead of kneading. It's the big difference with the sourdough is that you're not kneading the dough. You have to be very gentle with it. So this at this time this hasn't this dough hasn't got any salt. You see how we lifting and folding it over as well. And we're gonna watch over time as this as this dough develops, strengthens. A bit more water. So we're going to leave it for half an hour and then I'm going to add a little bit more water but actually not too much because this is already quite sticky and we're going to add 25 grams of salt to it but we're going to do it in about 30 minutes time because we want to just let the dough sit here for a little bit and for that gluten structure to start to, to develop. And then the salt will kick it in a bit more and make it even stronger. So we just want to add, I've got some sea salt. We're just going to add roughly 20, 25 grams. Something like that of salt. Salt's quite important for the gluten development. It really helps to encourage the network to, to build. So again, make sure that you have uh, some water to put your fingers into. What I do is I just give it a bit of, give it a bit of that. Make some little, can you see how just adding water to your hand is also adding water to the dough which is why you don't put all of the water in at the very beginning 
because I'm slowly adding the rest of the water here as I as I go on so here's the salt going in um, this is still early stages so don't worry too much at this stage um, about just being quite rough with the dough to mix this salt in and you can literally just get it in there that's a bit more water in fact we probably want a little splash of water just in there to for mixing we just want to get that salt in there at this stage can you see how already though it's uh it's gone from being quite sticky to having um some shape to it and it's not actually that bad it's not it's not that hard to handle now because already the gluten network is developing some people go up to like 90 percent hydration but they're adding the water gradually over time and giving the dough time to develop which makes it not so difficult to uh, to handle 90 percent is quite high though i mean that is starting to get quite uh, sticky and almost impossible to to shape but, um you get used to it over time you really get used to the feel of the dough and how to handle it and how to deal with the stickiness you can see here how um you know it's very fast movements you have to be quite confident with it and you get used to what you can do. if i le left my hands on there for a bit too long then i would start sticking so it's all about confidence really getting in there and uh getting used to it and that only comes with time and uh the experience just just keep doing it so that's that so that can just be left now um for another hour or so maybe two hours and then we've, we'll start doing the stretch and folds oh and don't forget to cover it up with a wet tea towel while it's sat there so you don't get anything flying into it and all now we're going to do our first round of stretch and fold which is a bit different to just kneading the bread uh, because with sourdough you want to kind of maintain that gluten network that matrix of uh, the gluten proteins and stuff so if you just bash away at it and knead the hell out of it you're just going to break that that whole structure so a little bit of water like i said you want to be adding slowly we're adding a little bit more water in but what i do is i just kind of grab some water in my hand and it's all going in the dough now this is only the first round of the stretch and fold and as you can see it's still quite wet this dough but watch what happens when we start to to play with it and manipulate it so we're going to turn it now you want to keep doing this for the first round until it feels like you're starting to develop um a structure it doesn't feel so wet anymore you can feel you can feel it all starting to sort of stay together you see how stretchy it is a little bit more water we don't know, I'm not gonna try I'm gonna try not to add too much water to this because it is still quite sticky but it's uh, it's starting to come together already and you can sort of with your thumbs you can start to tuck it in a bit and then fold it over like so a little bit of water just to sort of smooth it down stretch and fold you see how you can feel that it's starting to come together now as a as a whole because it starts to hold together when you stretch it and fold it you see that a little bit more I'm going to tuck this bit in you see it's got an air bubble there already it's starting to uh, to get all that air in it that you want that lovely air it's going to get bigger as well as the air starts forming these little pockets of air in there and it will start to start to to double in size basically now we're going to do this one more time and then I'm going to leave it a bit the next lot you won't do it as much because you want to 
you want to start progressively being more and more gentle with it basically there you go now let's just leave that now put the uh, tea towel back on put that away we'll do the next round in about an hour or so right so we come to the um, the second stage of the stretch and fold uh, but this time on the second stage is where if you want to add stuff to your to your bread now is a good time to do it so there's loads of different combinations of flavors and and things that you can add to your bread so this is fig and we've got some pecan nuts as well in here all chopped up I haven't tried pecans before so this is quite now usually I would do with hazelnuts or something like that but we'll see what happens with pecans I'm hoping they're not too soft and don't burn or something uh, they should be all right and here's the, the dough now so you can see it's like it's a little bit bubbly so all we do is we um, put the stuff in like that just spread it out a bit evenly and then we a bit of water on the hands again and we just do the, uh, the stretch and fold again and you'll notice straight away that the uh, that it's grown and it's got tighter as well the gluten structure is, uh, is starting to, to form really well and as we put in and as we fold in these these ingredients into the bread it starts to to, to get really quite baggy with all the stuff in it. And we don't want to do too many stretch and folds this time. So not as many as the first time. Um, but we need to get all this stuff inside the dough. So I'm going to go maybe another couple more times. You can see, can you film this Alice? Can you see how the, uh, the dough is really starting to form now? So when I stretch it, it really holds together quite well and that's that we'll come back to that in another hour or so and we'll do the final stretch and fold here's Alice and Martha Hang on. <laughs> right so this is the final stretch and fold session but let's have a look at the dough now look at that it's already got some big bubbles in there now this is getting really active um, a little bit of water on my fingers here not too much I don't want to add too much more water to this because it's uh, it's definitely a little bit sticky and don't forget we got all that uh, those lovely figs and those pecans inside of this dough now so as I stretch you can see them coming through a little bit that's fine that's all it's all good so I've got to be careful with this now so I'm a little bit being a bit more gentle with it like that don't need too many folds here just stretch it up fold it over you'll see these figs and nuts are starting to break through a bit but that's all good no worries it's got lots of air in it and when the fight when you do the final proof in the basket that's when it all comes together so it doesn't matter if you end up with holes in it or anything at this stage it's all good so yeah that's looking pretty good one more little stretch and fold there took this bit in here a bit look at that so that's gonna that's that'll all settle down now leave that for another couple of hours or so and then I'll chop that up and put it into the baskets well I've got to shape it put it into the baskets and and then leave it overnight and then early tomorrow morning most likely very early as well um, probably have to get up about three or four to bake it um, it can go in the oven so there you go so this video has been all about um, the mix well we've made the levan from the starter we then mix the dough up and we talked about adding the water progressively so 80% of the total 
first, and then the other 20% gradually. What are you doing? Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Doing my YouTuber. Yeah, <sighs>